Now we'll move on to a few concepts of St. John of the Cross regarding purification. John of the Cross was a Spanish mystic Carmelite in the 16th century. And he talks about this process and he compares it to the sea. If we stick to the shore, if we get too comfortable, we will be sticking to the shore and we will not be moving into deeper waters. But if we let go of our comforts, we can move more, more freely deep into deeper waters where the more purifying action of God takes place. He writes, one must cast out all attachments if he wishes to climb the spiritual ladder. He also writes this, until a man, it's, until a man is purged of his attachments, he will not be equipped to possess God. He's uh, connecting this to eternal salvation again, where we actually possess God in fullness it, I, on that day, on that, at the time when we enter into heaven. And until a man is purged of his attachments, this cannot happen. So I'll quickly run through the list of attachments very, very briefly. So some of us attached to material goods, like bank balance, property, articles. Some of us may say we have some sentimental value to certain items. Regarding moral goods, some of us have a people-pleasing attitude. And many of us may be wanting to appease our own conscience in doing good work and doing charities which is all good, but at the same time, is it the will of God? That's a question to be asked. Many a time we get caught up with supernatural and spiritual goods, the gifts of the spirit, prophecy, visions, teaching, healing, deliverance. We get caught up with miracles, signs, and wonders. All these can be attachments and can actually cause pride in us. On the right side, we see different types of attachments which we may fall into. Attachments to people, not just family, other people also. Sometimes certain friendships, a line is crossed. Some of us have our identity in achievements, in our work, in our you know, hobbies, in what we do. Some of us are craving for name, fame, reputation. All these need to be checked. Some of us uh, spend so much time in front of the mirror wondering how we look and how we can you know, reap praises from others. Different types of attachments, knowledge, ideas, expectations, time usage, certificates, foods. So God is asking us to let go of each of these I have, uh, there's a video on YouTube in my channel. So if you all want more information on the list of attachments with more Bible verses and more quotes from St. John of the Cross, uh, please do visit and look at that video. All of us are blinded in different ways. The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. It talks about unbelievers here. But all of us, including believers, are under the attack of Satan in different ways. We are also blinded. So this man here, the sketch here is of a man, and he's a believer. He's a, quite a strong believer. But of course, not perfect like all of us. And in the course of time, he develops, or he has certain attachments on his soul. So here we see a cloud has blinded him. But he's still continuing to walk. The only problem is he can't uh, see where he's going in the spiritual realm. In the natural, he may be seeing so in the course of time, he will be purifying, uh, cooperating with the Holy Spirit in purification. So here he may surrender a portion of his life and the cloud becomes a little smaller after God purifies him. And this journey continues. He may seek the Lord and he may say, Lord, save me, help me, purify me, heal me. And the cloud becomes even smaller. Now this keeps happening. Based on his cooperation, this keeps happening. And finally, this cloud is removed from him. Now he's purified to an extent where he can walk in the spirit and he can really lead a life pleasing to God. Here's a comparison of like before and after. Before he was clouded with the attachments, his reason and intellect was, uh, was blinded. And he would be using human reasoning and logic rather than uh, walking in the ways of the spirit. That is the wide path to destruction. Without the cloud, he is taking the narrow path to eternal life. This is in reference to Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 7. 13 and 14. And the text of Romans 8 is also here below, left side and right side. Left side, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. And on the right side, we see, if you live by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. Again, the same uh, images which we saw earlier, the heart which is full of stains, impurities, and after cleansing, after sanctification, after renouncing and repentance and surrender and a lot of prayer, the heart gets cleaned and the, the man is walking in the light of the spirit. Here's another analogy. 
Romans 5 verse 5 says indicates rather that God wants to pour his love into our hearts through the holy spirit that's the desire of God unfortunately in the course of time a block happens so the circle is like a block like a barrier now the love of God can pass through but not not in fullness and as we as we go through life more and more of these blocks keep coming up and some blocks get purified so these are actually layers of attachment these are layers of self love and all these need to be removed it happens through human cooperation through prayer and of course the work of the holy spirit and through fire uh, purifying fire which which is not very comfortable there is pain in the process look at this uh, caterpillar this caterpillar will one day become a butterfly but not just like that it has to go through this process of metamorphosis here are the different stages starting with an egg then caterpillar the third stage is critical it's a pupa stage very very difficult stage and then finally it becomes a butterfly in the fourth stage in this third stage it undergoes a lot of pain it has to break free from that covering from that shell from its safety net and come out with a lot of effort to become that butterfly brothers and sisters this is the process this is the 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 liberation and the freedom that god wants to reach us to god wants to purify us there's absolutely no doubt about it but now the problem is or rather the question is how does he want to do it what is the divine way of doing it rend your hearts and not your garments joel 2 verse 13 and psalm 51 17 says a humble and contrite heart i will not spurn so spiritual purification is connected to this concept of pruning here i want to present quickly about seven new testament verses six for now and one in he from hebrews 9 towards the end looking at the image it's not going to be a very smooth process when something dear to you is removed from your life and something you treasure which may not lead you to god which may not lead you to holiness is removed from your life it is definitely going to cause pain like the branch they are being cut off Jesus says in John 15 he removes every branch in me that bears no fruit every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit so who is the he the he is actually god the father which is mentioned in john 15 verse 1 it's actually the work of god who does this removal we need to be grateful and thankful for these things when they happen at that point of time we may not understand what is going on that's a challenge we have to face pruning is painful and this painful uh, process leads to a redemptive outcome what is this redemptive outcome before we proceed it let us be clear that god will not test us beyond our strength and this is from the bible first corinthians 10 verse 13 and that verse goes on to say that he will always make the way out and he has already made the way out in the cross of jesus which we'll come to a little later and let's not forget the thorn in the flesh which was given to paul a suffering was given to saint paul in second uh, corinthians chapter 12 and saint paul asked god to remove it from him but it was not removed and finally paul admitted paul realized and admitted in 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 the in the same passage that it was meant for his uh, to prevent him from being proud to prevent him from being too elated and later the words of jesus are, are in verse verse 9 my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness the thorn in the flesh is given to each of us it's actually a gift from god it keeps us holy keeps us humble and leads us to eternal salvation let's quickly run through a few more verses james 1:2 to 4 my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of any kind consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let the endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete lacking in nothing the redemptive outcome is is highlighted in red we get endurance through painful circumstances now we get maturity we become complete and we really lack nothing this is this is the work of god in and through a soul which cooperates with him romans 5 3 to 5 we also boast in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance endurance produces character character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us because god's love has been poured into our hearts through the holy spirit that has been given to us here again the redemptive outcome is highlighted endurance character hope and beautiful uh, outcome of redempt of painful circumstances is god's love being poured into our hearts because a, a void is created in our hearts and god fills that void the words of jesus in john 12 very challenging verse here 
unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. So the call is to serve God by working towards our purification and cooperating with the Holy Spirit. To the extent that he freely cooperates, man's thoughts and affections, mentality and conduct are slowly purified and transformed on a journey that is never completely finished in this life. A line from Pope Benedict from his encyclical, The Door of Faith. Here, if you look at the, the highlighted words, we need to freely cooperate. And this choice is actually given to each of us and God will not force us to do it. So this choice, uh, it's a decision we each need to make for ourselves. We, need to, we just need to say, yes, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Here's another analogy. At around 6.30 or 7, the sun is setting. And it's a time of darkness, where darkness seems to set in. And the destination or the desired time is the next day dawn, which indicates a time of blessing. But in between dusk and dawn is midnight. And in the spiritual uh, uh, analogy, spiritual purification happens in, in this darkness. In this darkness, uh, in this time of, of dryness, spiritual purification happens through the purifying love of God and the purifying fire. Jesus asked her, St. Faustina, diary number 36, Jesus asked her, which do you prefer? To suffer now for one day in purgatory or for a short while on earth? St. Faustina answered Jesus in a very funny way, in a very weird way. She said, I prefer to suffer both on earth and in purgatory. Not to say she was crazy or mad or insane, but she knew the value of the purifying fire and she knew the value uh, that it has in eternal life. So I'll quickly run, uh, make this a little clearer for us. If we are purified 30% on earth, we have to be purified 70% in purgatory to get to heaven. The total has to be 100%. If you're purified 40% on earth, 60% of purification has to be done in purgatory. And now if you're purified 80% on earth, only 20% is left uh, for our purification in purgatory. The total will have to be 100%, otherwise we will not get, we will not enter into heaven. That, uh, that This was reflected in the earlier passage in Revelation chapter 21, which we saw in the beginning. Nothing unclean can enter the eternal city of God. Now, before we move to a conclusion, the final verse in the New Testament from Hebrews chapter 9, this connects to the blood of Christ. For if the blood of goats and bulls sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. So dear brothers and sisters, I want to give us a couple of practical suggestions here for our purification. One is go to the foot of the cross and reflect on Jesus's passion. As often as the spirit leads, not just during the chaplet or during mass or during the sorrowful mysteries, but anytime and uh, at any other time too, reflecting on the passion of Christ deals us with deep, deep purification, which cannot be explained. And another practical suggestion is to, to visit the blessed sacrament as often as we can. Here again, in some mysterious way, being in the presence of the Lord, some purification happens to sincere souls, which cannot be explained. Concluding with this, the statement that we are the bride of Christ, we are called to eternal life. Christ Jesus is the bridegroom. This concept is reflected in Ephesians chapter 5. Are we preparing ourselves to be the bride of Christ? Are we preparing ourselves to, to enter into the spiritual marriage and be in union with God forever? To be the bride of Christ means to be purified. And this happens through the work of the Holy Spirit, through our cooperation. So yet, let us yield to the Holy Spirit. Let us yield to God's ways. Let us say, yes, Lord, at all times, have your way in me, purify me, cleanse me, heal me, touch me. Let us uh, try to walk in self-denial in, in areas which, which can lead to our sanctification and our holiness. Hebrews 12 tells us, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Hence the importance of this topic. Thank you, friends. This is the end of my reflection. Uh, praise be to God. May God lead us and have a good evening.
it is also timely today being friday like i had said it is um, the day that god won salvation for us we pray hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 